why do men die earlier by six years? I really wanted to know this. So I did a deep dive into this topic and what I'm going to show you is actually extremely interesting. There's a lot of speculation on why this is. Like men are involved with jobs that are more of an occupational hazard. Men go to doctors less. And of course, men smoke more and they drink more alcohol and they get more heart attacks and strokes. That's for sure. But women actually get more autoimmune diseases than men. But that's more chronic and they don't necessarily die from those conditions. Why do women live longer than men? That's the big question. Well, it just so happens there's a very specific gene called the longevity gene, FOXO3, that actually can help you live longer. Women express that gene more than men because they have estrogen. Estrogen activates that gene. But there's a lot of other things that can activate that gene that I'm going to share with you today because personally, I would want to know so I can live longer. There are also certain cultures that have even more of an expression of that gene than others. And they happen to live in areas like Okinawa and Sardinia, where people live to be over a hundred years old. What does this gene actually do? It helps prevent cancer. It really helps you with gene repair. It's like a stress resistant gene that just allows you to adapt and live in your environment a lot better. Why did it turn out where women get to express that gene more than men? This all has to do with reproduction and the actual purpose of fertility. Nature has given that system way more protection and it has created genes to help women survive longer. And this is all great, but then how do we activate this gene? I'm going to show you right now all the things that can trigger that gene that you should be focusing on. And it doesn't matter if you're male or female, you should be following what I'm about to show you. Okay, so I have a list of things that could increase the FOXO3 gene and also a list of things that will decrease the FOXO3 gene. So let's, let's talk about number one, phytonutrients. There are certain phytonutrients that will increase this gene or increase the expression of it. The first one is called astaxanthin. What the heck is that? That's like a weird name. Well, that's the uh, pink pigment in that salmon that you eat. It's in shrimp, it's in lobster, it's in certain algae. It is literally, I think, the most potent antioxidant. It's 6,000 times stronger than vitamin C a hundred times stronger than the vitamin E, and it gives protection for your nerve cells, your eyes, your skin, your cardiovascular system. Then we get sulforaphane. This is naturally in broccoli, but it's also in cabbage. It's in a lot of the different cruciferous vegetables. And some of you might say, well, I'm a carnivore. Well, guess what? When you eat grass-fed red meat and even like raw dairy, you're getting a lot of these phytonutrients because the animal is eating the weeds that have these compounds in it. So you don't necessarily need to consume herbs and vegetables themselves if you didn't want to. Then we have something called EGCG. That is a really amazing antioxidant in green tea, which has so many different properties from blood sugar improvement to anti-cancer to anti-inflammatory. I mean, the list is very, very long. Resveratrol has been known to increase longevity because it's triggering this gene right here. In fact, all of these will trigger this gene. Next one is cold and heat. And even the contrast between cold and heat can activate this gene. This is why people get benefit from doing the cold bath and the sauna because it's very therapeutic. And this gene was actually created out of times in the past where we as humans had to endure the cold or the equator, the heat, and we had to adapt to it somehow. We had to survive. So we created certain genes to protect us. Let's take a look at number three, intermittent fasting. This is a mini version of starvation. Think about how many times man has literally starved to death, right? We had to adapt to famine, starvation by developing certain survival mechanisms. Number four, ketones. I mean, even if you look this up on Wikipedia, you're gonna find that ketones will trigger this. So what does this tell you? You're gonna live longer if you are using your ketones as fuel because they trigger this gene. So this relates to, guess what? A low carb diet. Next one is exercise. Well, this makes sense. The more exercise you do, especially if it's like high intensity interval training, you can activate this gene and you're going to live longer. Below this list are things that are potent triggers for this gene, even more than these right here. Prolonged fasting, okay? We talked about intermittent fasting, but prolonged fasting is fasting for 48 hours, maybe 72 hours, sometimes maybe even longer. Huge 
impact on this gene right here. And then number seven, controlled oxidative stress. When you do hypoxia training, forcing your body to trigger this gene and adapt to it and actually develop bigger red blood cells, more fitness strength. So this is one little thing that I would highly recommend if you wanna take your health to the next level. And then look at number eight, sun. Interesting, sun will trigger this, the UV radiation. If you're indoors all the time, you won't have the full benefit of this right here. Now let's flip over here. What, what decreases this uh, gene? Too much insulin, which makes sense because having type two diabetes will increase insulin. That's gonna shut this gene down and you're not gonna live as long. That makes sense. Chronic inflammation, that's an obvious thing. But again, if you do intermittent type exercise, you're gonna develop inflammation, then let your body recover. Chronic stress, again, the key thing is chronic, right? Versus intermittent. Overfeeding, eating constantly is really, really bad and you're gonna inhibit this gene. Of course, you're not gonna live as long. A sedentary lifestyle. Too much sitting in front of the computer will inhibit the gene as well. Heavy metals, aluminum, mercury, things like that. EMF, electromagnetic fields from cell phones, from different type of electrical fields that come off your electronics is really bad. And then this one right here is called endocrine disruptors, pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, plastics. Most of these mimic estrogen. Now, remember I told you that estrogen will trigger this? Yes, but this indirect estrogen is really bad. It will not trigger this, it shuts it down, and you don't get the benefit of estrogen. I hope now you understand why women live longer than men, but that doesn't mean that you can't apply these and actually live just as long as women. And since we're on the topic of longevity, if you haven't seen this other video on longevity, I'm gonna put it up right here. Check it out. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, 
you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.